We are living in a time of troubled waters. The COVID pandemic has been going on for a long time now. It has waxed, it has waned, but it's looking like it's never really going to be gone. It's always going to be interfering, disturbing our lives in one way or another. Inflation is skyrocketing in ways that we have not seen in over 40 years, and it's wiping out those increases in wages that workers had fought so hard for in the past year. Russia has invaded Ukraine. You have tens of thousands of civilians who have been killed. You've got cities that have been flattened. You've got millions of Ukrainians who are refugees. China is eyeing Taiwan. It's getting impatient with Taiwan's independence. It's making noises about wanting to take over Taiwan, whether Taiwan wants that or not. In our own country, we've got such political division. The two major political parties have so demonized each other and have so divided the public that we can hardly talk to each other. We can hardly even understand each other. So that now everything from, from approving a, a Supreme Court justice to approving a member on a local school board. It's like a life and death struggle. We are in a time of troubled waters. And every time I think the roiling waters are about to subside a little bit, another crisis comes up and those waters churn more violently than before. What should we do during this time of troubled waters? Let God guide you beside still waters. The 23rd Psalm is the most famous psalm in the Bible. It has captured the imagination and it has nurtured and fed Jews and Christians for thousands of years. When I was 10 years old, I was hit by a car. I was in the hospital for a month. And I remember when I was lying there in the hospital bed, I would sometimes recite out loud the 23rd Psalm. It was the only passage in the Bible that I knew by heart. And as I, as I recited it, I was comforted by it. Although, uh, to be honest, there was one line in that psalm that never made sense to me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I could understand goodness and mercy following me, but why was surely following me? Well, I've been a pastor now for a long time, and I've used the 23rd Psalm many, many times in my ministry. But to be honest, I've used it so often that I've gotten tired of it. And so there came a point when I stopped using the 23rd Psalm. I stopped reading it. I stopped reciting it. I stopped preaching it. In fact, I have not preached a sermon specifically, exclusively, on the 23rd Psalm for 20 years. Well, that ends now. I am now returning to the 23rd Psalm. I am reading it again. I am listening to it again. I am preaching about it again. Because now we need this Psalm more than we have ever needed it before. The Lord is my shepherd. One of the big problems we have is that we either don't have a shepherd or we're being led by the wrong shepherd. Now, a lot of people say, hey, I'm not a sheep. I don't need a shepherd. You know, I'm, I'm grown up. I, I, I can make my own decisions. I can run my own life. I can be my own shepherd. I think that this attitude is a bit naive because there are always forces in our lives that we do not have control over and which 
in fact, are controlling us. The forces, political forces, social forces, economic forces, medical forces, these things impinge on our lives in ways we cannot control. Even the forces within us, our own compulsions, our own addictions, our own impetuous things that we do, our habits, oftentimes we don't really control them to some degree. They control us. And so when we say, I don't have a shepherd, I don't need a shepherd, in fact, we probably all do have a shepherd. But it may be that that shepherd is indifferent and uncaring. Or our shepherd is afraid and angry. And that's not a good shepherd. This psalm is inviting us to follow the right shepherd, the good shepherd, God. And when we give our lives to the good shepherd, then when the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I'm not fixated anymore on what I want. I want this. I want that. Want, 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 want. If the Lord is my shepherd, then God is providing what I need. And if God is providing what I need, I can relax. I can let go. He makes me lie down in green pastures. In other words, God feeds us the food that we really need. He leads me beside still water still waters. That image has become so much more important to me in these last few years. Now, every morning when I go to my office, I sit down and I spend time being still with God. I let go of my worries. I let go of my hurry. I let go of my schedule. I let go of my tasks. I let go of my resentments. I let go of my ambitions. I let go of my ego. And when I do this, when, I, when I'm simply still with God, then my soul is restored. And then I can go and I can do things that are beneficial and healthy and healing. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. Now the evil is still there. The darkness is still there. The troubles are still there. The shadow of death is still there. But if I'm being fed by God, if I am beside still waters with God, if I'm trusting God, then I don't need to fear evil. My emotions are not captive to the troubles around me. I trust in the presence of God. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Notice a shift here. The psalm has suddenly shifted from talking about God to talking to God. When we talk about God, that's fairly safe. When we talk about God, we're, we're holding God out a little ways from us. When we talk about God, we're being intellectual. 
But when we talk to God, now we're risking. When we talk to God, now we are creating an intimacy with God. When we pour out to God how we are feeling, what we are thinking, our fears, our joys, when we confess to God, when we give this all to God, now something may happen that we don't can't predict. Who knows what would happen when we talk to God. Talking about God is not what gives us calm, peace, strength, courage, guidance. It's a relationship with God that gives us these things. It's when we have poured it all out to God that's when a relationship is established. That's when we get this strength that allows us to walk through the darkest valley without fear. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My enemies. Wouldn't it be wonderful if God would just make our enemies disappear? Poof! Enemies gone. Wow, life would be so wonderful without my enemies. But of course, that's not what life is like. It's not even, I think, what God wants our lives to be like. The enemies have to be there all the time. The enemies are always there. But the enemies are there and God is here in between. God is next to me. And God is preparing a table, preparing a meal for me. I'm God's guest at God's table. And, and God pours perfume over my head and God pours wine in my cup until it overflows. And so even though my enemies are present, I experience the blessing of God. Surely, certainly, certainly goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. The word translated here, mercy, in Hebrew is chesed, and chesed means committed love, loyal love, love that is constant. In the Bible, the two words that are used most frequently to describe who God is are goodness and love. Goodness and love, these are the two words that get at the essence of what God is about, who God is. This is the God that we are trusting in. This is the shepherd that we are following, the God of goodness and love. And when we follow the shepherd of goodness and love, if that's who God is, if that's who we are trusting in, then what is there to fear? I mean, really, if this is who God is, if this is the God we are trusting in, what is there to fear? I can't help but wonder whether Psalm 23 was in Jesus' mind when he was preaching. You know, when Jesus was, was teaching the crowds, when he was talking to those impoverished peasants, when he was talking to all those people who were suffering so much trauma in their lives, when he was talking to these people who were wondering where the next meal is going to come from, wondering about their survival, and he says to them, don't worry about your life. Don't worry about what you're going to eat and what you're going to drink. Don't worry about what you're going to be wearing. Don't worry about shelter. Don't worry about the 
the necessities of life. The, don't worry about survival. God knows you need these things. God knows this. So, first, pursue goodness. First, pursue love. First, pursue God's righteousness. And all these other needs will fall into place. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Follow. The Hebrew word there actually means pursue. Sometimes we think we are being pursued by our enemies. We're being pursued by the troubles of the world. But actually we are being pursued by goodness and love all the time, every day, all of our lives. The message of Jesus, the message of Psalm 23, is one. When I was a boy, my family would go camping at a, at a lake up in Wisconsin. And every year, my father would try to teach me how to swim in that lake. Now, I was afraid of that lake. It was a dark lake. The water looked pretty murky to me. I didn't know what in the world was swimming around in that water. I couldn't see the bottom. There was a little pier. I did not like jumping off that pier into the water. I didn't, didn't like diving into the water. I hated all that. And my dad, he tried to teach me how to swim. And in his way of teaching me, which by the way, I don't think this was the best way, but anyway, his way of teaching me was he thought, first of all, I should learn how to float on my back. So he would uh, hold me up and lower me into the water. And he would tell me, now arch your back and put your head back in the water, which I hated because then the, the water came up over my ears. And, and I just hated that, you know, that water rushing into my ears. And, and then he would gradually let his arms go. And I would stiffen up and I would panic and I would sink like a stone. And this happened every single time. This happened every year. We went on vacation at that lake. I never did learn how to swim based on my father's instructions. But I remember the day when I thought to myself, now I wonder what would happen if I were to instead sort of lay out in the water frontwards. What, what if I were to put my face in the water and, and spread out my arms and spread out my legs? What would happen if I did that? And I did this, and I discovered that the water held me up quite easily. I was surprised at how easy it was. I'm floating, and it was fun. I also found that if I just simply moved my arms a little bit, I would be propelled forward. I'm swimming. I could not believe how easy this was. I could have been doing this every summer for years. All those years, that lake was waiting for me to simply trust the water to hold me up. Let God lead you now to still waters and God will restore your soul.